Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 308. Please turn to it. Page number 308 and today is our lesson number 79. Our penultimate day, our penultimate lesson. Tomorrow we'll finish up the project. Something that we started about a month ago. The last two questions is what we have to do on this page, on page 308, number 22. On number 22, we are being asked to arrange these numbers, that these quantities that are given to us, and read very carefully because you have to pay attention as to what is being asked. Are they asking us to, whenever they give you numbers like this, uh, uh, pay attention as to whether, they, whether we, are, we are being asked to arrange them in ascending order or descending order. Do you understand whether we have to arrange them from uh, least to the greatest or from the greatest to the least? Do you follow me? Here they are asking us to arrange them in from greatest to the least. From greatest to the least. And don't worry about the terms that I just used, ascending and descending, they, they never use those terms, they keep it very simple. They will, tell you, or they will always tell you to arrange them either from greatest to the least or from least to the greatest. Here it is from greatest to the least, we are going in descending order, we are decreasing as we go along. So numbers that are given to us are negative 28 over 3, negative 9.1, negative 15 over 2 and finally negative 9. As you can see some of them are in decimal format, some of them are in fraction format. It's always a good idea to present everything in the same format so that it's easier for us to compare apples to apples. And I prefer to put, I prefer to put them in, in fractions and you will see why in a second. It's easier actually to see, look at, the, look at them in, the, in, in fractions. 28 over, 28 over 3, 28 over 3 can be written as 27 over 3 plus 1 over 3. 28, 28 over 3 is same as 27 over 3 plus 1 over 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So it's 9 in one third. This quantity is 9 in one third. Now I should have not have done such a brilliant job. Well, let's put it here. Negative sign, negative sign. So we have to, this whole thing is also negative. I shouldn't have done such a brilliant job because I left no room to put, put the answers underneath. I'm going to raise this middle part. So this quantity turns out to be negative 9 in one third. Hold on, let's move on to this one. This is 9 and 0 0.1 which is 9 in one tenth. 15 over 2, 15 over 2, 15, 15 over 2 can be written as 14 over 2 plus 1 over 2. And 14 divided by 2 is 7, so it's 7 and a half, 7 and a half. This is negative 7 and a half. And finally this is 9. Among the four numbers that we see there, and remember, these are negative numbers, which means 7 actually, negative 7 is actually larger than negative 9. Negative 7 is larger. If you look at the number line here, negative 7 is going to fall here, and negative 8, and then negative 9. And somewhere down there, somewhere way over there, of course we cannot continue in the same way, so we have to do it in a broken line here, so that somewhere down here is our 0. As you can see, negative 7 is larger than negative 8. Negative 7 and a half is going to fall right there. Negative 7 and a half is going to fall right there. That's the, that's the greatest answer. Okay, That's the greatest one. And since they're asking us to arrange from greatest to least, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause right now at this point, And we're going to look at the answer choices. And we're going to cross out any answer choice, cross out any answer choice that does not begin with negative 7 and a half. Because negative 7 and a half is the greatest one. Cross out as many answer choices as you can that, 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 that does not begin with negative 7.5. Let's see what we can do. Because negative 7.5 is the largest one, that has to be the first one. What do you see? What do you see there? Every single answer choice can be crossed out except A. The answer is A. The answer is A. This is the greatest one. And the answer is A because A is the only answer choice which begins with negative 7.5. So had this been a real exam, I wouldn't waste my time trying to do out the rest of it. 
this pointless. There is, uh, there, there is no, there, there is no point in it. Uh, we already found the answer. Isn't it? It's, it's there. But this is not a real exam. We are doing it here for learning purposes, so we can actually finish the process. Do you understand? But in the real exam, as I always remind you, as I always remind you, in the real exam, the amount of work that you put into a problem depends not only on what is being asked and what is being presented in the problem, but it depends equally on how the answer choices are presented to you. On a standardized, one more time, on a standardized exam, the amount of work that you give, put in in a given problem it depends equally on how the answer choices are presented. The nature of the answer choices will dictate how deep you want to get into it. Here we are done, but we're going to finish up anyway. Negative one-third is going to be the smallest one because one-third, negative one-third is smaller than negative one-tenth. So here we have to go all the way here. So here is your negative nine and one-tenth, and here is your negative nine and, and one-third. Negative nine and one-third is the least. Then we will have negative nine and one-tenth. Then we'll have negative nine, which is right here. And then finally negative one and a half. So here, this, this is the order. This is the smallest one. Then this guy, then this guy and that guy. And of course they're going to be written in order here because it's a number line. Only thing that you, that you have to pay attention is that if, you, if you're going to look at them on number line, always remember that on the number line obviously moving from left to right we are going from least to the greatest, not greatest to least. Because they're asking from the greatest to least, if you're going to present them on a number line, remember to go from right to left. This is the greatest, this is the least. Negative one half is the, is this, is the greatest. Negative seven and a half. Negative Seven and a half is the greatest one. I will get out of your way so that you can have the un unobstructed view before we do the next one. All right, number 23, the very last one on the page. Number 23 deals with the concept. Number 23 deals with the concept, the notion that we we'll discussed on the very first day of our of our uh, tutorial on day one. We learned the concept of PEMDAS because that's the very first question on day one. And if you have not watched that video, you might find it fruitful to watch it. Or if you have watched it, and if you don't remember it, you might want to watch it again. Day one, we learned PEMDAS. Now PEMDAS, as you know, is an acronym which stands for, which, which tells us, which tells us the order of operation. Parenthesis, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. We also learned in the past that when we were doing the problem dealing with PEMDAS, that multiplication and addition have the same priority. They have the same priority, which, which, which means that if you have a whole bunch of multiplication and a whole bunch of additions to do, it doesn't matter whether you do multiplication first or addition, uh, multiplication first or division first, you're going to get the same answer at the end. For example, for example, uh, 20 divided by divided by 2 times 4 is same as is same as 20 times 4 divided by 2. You're not going to get a different answer. It's the same answer. 20 divided by 2 is 10. This quantity is 10. 10 times 4 is going to give you 40. Had we gone this route, had we go this route, 20 times 4 is 80, and 80 divided by 2, 80 divided by 2 is also 40. As you can see, we get the same answer regardless of which, whether we do multiplication first or division first. Multiplication and division have the same priority. They are the same, they are the reverse of, inverse of each other, so it doesn't matter which one you do first. Similarly, additions and subtractions have the same priority. And that is easier to see actually. The addition and subtraction is much easier to see. As you can see here, 10 plus, 10 plus 3 minus 2 is going to be the same as 10 minus 2 plus 3. It's not going to change anything. So addition and subtraction have the same priority and multiplication and division have the same priority. Now that, now that everything is fresh in our mind, now that we recall everything, let's do the problem, shall we? It says 10 divided by 2.5 plus 3 minus 8 plus 2 plus 2 to the third. The order of operation tells us, and by the way, this acronym that we just discussed here, the mnemonic device that people uh, usually use is this uh, thing that, uh, that, you, that you hear people go around saying, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And of course from that, 
uh, we get this PEMDAS thing, which, uh, which we, as we just said, is an acronym for the, all the operations. So the very first one is the parenthesis. Do you see any parenthesis here? If we do, if we see, if we see any parenthesis, we have to do that first. Right there is parenthesis. 3, 3 minus an 8 is, 3 minus 8 is negative 5, a negative 5 and a 2, negative 5 and a negative, uh, negative 5 and a 2 is going to give us negative 3. So that takes care of that part. Then we have exponents. So we have to do the exponents which is right here. 2 raised to 3 is same as 8. Then we do multiplication and division. Multiplication and division. So here we see the division part. Let's do it out here. 10 divided by 2 and a half is 4. 10 divided by 2 and a half is 4. And how do we know that? Because 2 and a half plus 2 and a half is 5 and 5 plus 5 is 10. So what do we get? We get 4 minus a 3 which is 1. 1 plus 8 is 9. Now if you look at the answer choices at this point, if you look at the answer choices, you will see that 9 does not exist there. 9 is not one of the options. 9 is not one of the answer choices. This is how this is how I came to realize, this is how I came to realize that this is not 2.5, this is not 2.5, this is their way of saying 10 divided by 2.5 and their argument would be, their argument would be that's why they are written so far apart but I still don't like it. I still don't like it. If it's multiplication, show the bloody multiplication sign, it's easier to see. That's what they meant here, which is why we're not getting the same, which, which is why not we, we came up with the answer to eyes that doesn't exist there. So we have, we're going to have to redo it. It is, two and a, it is 2 times 5. The rest of this stuff does not change. This quantity is still negative 3 and that quantity is still 8. So again, let's begin our story. 10 times 2 is going to be 5. 5 times 5 is 25. And then we have minus 3 and a plus 8. 25 minus 3. 25 minus 3 would be 22. 22 plus 8 would be 30. And 30 is what they claim to be the right answer, which is answer choice D. But we shouldn't say it like that. It's not that it's not a matter of claim. 30 is the answer. 30 is the right answer because this was to be interpreted as the multiplication sign. Because that's the only way you're going to get the answer that, that's, that is there. Do you understand? Now listen, tomorrow will be our last day of the program. We'll finish up tomorrow all the questions that are remaining on the next page and the, and the, and the page after that. Tomorrow's video is going to be very long because I want to get it out of the way because we, we made uh, 10 videos from 71 through uh, we made 10, 10 videos from 61 through 70 for test number 1 and similarly we're going to make 10 videos from day 71 through 80 for test 2 and day, day 1 through 60 day 1 through 60 is where we did the exercises math exercises that you see on page number 50 to 110 the very last thing before I, before, I, before I close the video is that what I said in the beginning of the video today is that today is our penultimate day. Today is our penultimate day. We have, we have used this word many a times. Penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last day. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, you will find this word penultimate. We learned it on day number, I'm looking at my list here, day number 11. On day 11, just type in, just type in vocabulary words, just type in vocabulary words, day 11, along with my name, Keshwani, and the video will pop right up where we learned the word penultimate. And you will there, in that video, along with that word, you will learn, of course, many other words that will help you improve your vocabulary. I will see you tomorrow for the very last time, okay? Bye now.